happy birthday to me. <laughs> it's true, it's my birthday today. Uh, Monarch, Monica's Monarch birthday party usually occurs this time every year, right in the middle of the peak Monarch migration period. Usually I celebrate at the ranch uh, on the Llano River with my family and friends, with monarch butterflies. And that's where it all started for me about seven years ago on the Llano River on a crisp October day. I stepped out of my kayak and in these two pecan trees as I stepped on the bank, hundreds, maybe thousands of these orange butterflies fluttered all around me. It was like butterfly snow. It was magic. And that was the day I became a butterfly evangelist. Since that time, I spent most of my spare time, which is not much, reading, learning, writing, and talking about butterflies at the Texas Butterfly Ranch. I do presentations on butterflies, I garden for butterflies, I attend conferences on butterflies. I've even been known to take caterpillars to work when they're about to go chrysalis, so as not to miss the moment and share it with my colleagues. I guess you could say I've been seduced. Specifically, by this butterfly, the monarch, the king of the butterflies, with its dramatic four-inch wingspan and its dreamy sauntering flight pattern, it's really easy to spot. It has the most beautiful metamorphosis. The females lay three to four hundred of these cream-colored ribbed eggs on the underside of milkweed plants. And about four days later, a greenish-gray caterpillar hatches and eats its tiny eggshell as its first convenient meal. They then eat 2,000 times their birth weight in milkweed leaves, becoming these eating machines. After about 10 to 12 days, depending on humidity and the temperature, they wander away from the plant or find a nice quiet place to spin this silky, sturdy button and hang in a J-shape upside down to prepare to make a chrysalis. The chrysalis is this amazing jade-colored, jewel-like structure with gold flecks. Scientists believe the gold flecks have something to do with proper wing formation. And the chrysalis stays like that for about 10 to 14 days. And when it's ready to become a butterfly, it turns opaque, then dark, then clear. And then a monarch butterfly is born. Monarchs are the only insects to migrate all the way from Michoacan to Mexico to Canada and back. No single creature makes this trip. What happens is, they wake up in the spring in Michoacan, they mate, they die. Their children then continue the journey north, returning in the fall to the same ancestral roosts. This is Michoacan at 10,000 feet, and those are not dead leaves on that tree. Those are millions and millions of monarch butterflies. My husband and I, Bob, went to see the roosts uh, last year, and to, to witness a spectacle in its natural state is really awesome in the, in the true sense of the word. When the sun rises, the butterflies can't fly if it's not 60 degrees, so the sun comes up and it heats their little bodies, and when it heats them just so, they bust off the tree in what's called a butterfly explosion. These butterflies are coming at you, just beating on your skin, on your face, and it's the most amazing sight, and don't leave your mouth open because you might get a butterfly in there. We're so lucky because one day in the spring, they continue to fly north. And coming and going, they have to pass through the Texas funnel. We are very fortunate to live here in the hill country, in the central flyway, where our Texas hill country streams and rivers offer nectar, roosting, and mating opportunities. They continue that journey north throughout the summer. Starting in March, they continue the journey all the way to Canada. And then in the fall, about this time right now, they start to come back our way. And typically the butterflies live three weeks, but this migratory generation can live nine months. And we're about to see them come through San Antonio right now, peak migration time. We don't really know how they find their way back to Michoacan. These butterflies have never been to those ancestral roots, and yet every year they go back to the same spot. Because of their return right around the end of October, early November, it coincides with the Day of the Dead, and the Mexican peoples, the ancient peoples, believe that the monarchs were their ancestors returning home to visit. It took 40 years of research to figure this puzzle out. Um, this woman, Catalina Trail, who lives in Austin, she and her husband, Ken Brueger, worked closely with Dr. Fred Urquhart out of Canada to identify the location of the roosting spots. They did that in 1975, and National Geographic broke that story in 1976, and it sent the butterfly world all a flutter. 
programs for tagging monarch butterflies has been around uh, for decades. Uh, the one that we participate in is called Monarch Watch, and I'm going to be doing a demonstration later if you'd like to join us at the Holt Center for the reception on how to tag a monarch butterfly. Um, what Monarch Watch does is works with citizen scientists like myself to net, tag, record data, and release butterflies in the fall. My family and I have, have tagged about 1,500 butterflies in the last few years. Of those, we've had 23 recovered on the forest floor in Michoacan. The native guides there are, are uh, rewarded with a $5 bounty per tag, and so they have an incentive to pick up these dead butterflies, take the tags off, and give them back to scientists so they can record the data. So the monarch itself is not an endangered species, but the phenomenon of the monarch migration is seriously at risk, and many of us believe that this year in 2012 will be the absolute worst year in history for monarch butterfly numbers. Illegal logging in Mexico, habitat destruction and urban sprawl across the United States, genetically modified corn and other crops that leave our heartlands sterile of native plants and milkweeds, and possibly most compelling in recent months, the drought and climate change all conspire to create obstacles for the monarch butterfly migration. This is the Llano River just a couple of weeks ago, which typically is busting out with frost weed and goldenrod this time of year. But because of our drought last year, the water table is so low that our typical nectar plants that provide fuel for monarch butterflies right now were burnt to a crisp. What you can do, you can plant milkweed. It's the monarch host plant. This one, tropical milkweed, is easy to grow, widely available, and suitable for home gardens, but not for wildscapes. Any type of Asclepius species will do. They all contain this latex substance that makes it monarch butterflies distasteful to predators, which is evidenced by the famous barfing blue jay photo <laughs> taken by Dr. Lincoln Brower, who did an experiment and fed blue jays monarch butterflies, and they then turned around and retched. Um, the orange and black coloring of monarch butterflies is supposed to be a warning sign to predators, but this guy didn't listen. <laughs> so what would happen if the monarch migration ceased to exist? We don't really know, but many consider the migration a keystone of our ecosystem and that a downturn there signals a downturn for all pollinators and thus us. I would add to that that certainly the world would be a less enchanting place without these gorgeous skies every fall passing through town and reminding us how we're all connected. But I don't pretend to be objective. I'm a butterfly evangelist. And when I see those blue skies, raining monarchs, these tiny creatures flying thousands of miles to a place they've never been, I can't smile and be amazed. And now I bet you can't either. Thank you.